Hi, this is Mike Besner, Oregon High School Football State Rules Interpreter. This is a video about the new 40-second play clock that we're going to have in high school football starting in the 2019 season. It's an accompaniment to the documentation that Clark Sanders sent out uh, pretty recently. I'm going to go over some of that, and then we're going to look at some video to show how Colorado has been doing this since they've already experimented with it. So you could see what it looks like. And then I'll finish up with some closing thoughts about a couple um, scenarios that might be a little bit unique. So let's remember the reason why the 40 second clock even exists. The play clock is used to ensure that each team be given a standardized, consistent interval between plays and from game to game. The way that the game of football is played right now. A lot of teams like to go fast, and with the referee not now setting the pace with that 25-second clock, teams will be able to go at their, their own pace. So let's not lose sight of that, that the whole reason is to let teams uh, determine the flow of the game and, and take a little bit out of our hands. So both a 40-second and a 25-second play clock are going to be used. So unless the game is stopped for certain administrative reasons, change of possession, penalty, injury, clock error, etc., the offensive team will have 40 seconds to snap the ball after the previous play ends. This includes incomplete passes and first downs. Even though we're stopping the game clock, the play clock will still be set to 40 seconds, and I'll show some examples coming up. Keep in mind, uh, scores and tries or, or, and kickoffs are still using the 25-second play clock. So the play clock will be maintained, whether it's 40 seconds or 25 seconds, by the back judge and a five-person crew or the referee and a four-person crew. And that's no different than what we've already been doing. It's possible now that we can end up with a play clock operator. In the past, Oregon high schools weren't allowed to have visible play clocks, but the athletic directors have been told that it is now an option. They are allowed to. Whether any will or not remains to be seen, but for now we're going to train as though the back judge or referee will be keeping it on the field. If, they, if a school does end up installing play clocks and we have a play clock operator, then the back judge or the referee will be in charge of instructing them. And when we first do this, it will require probably quite a bit, bit of instruction and uh, maybe even checking in at the end of the quarter and halftime just to make sure they're doing it right until people are used to it. The referee or back judge will start the play clock when the previous play ends and the covering official, whether it's them or another official, gives a signal indicating that the ball has become dead. So signal S7 is the, the signal referees give to, for a dead ball foul. Uh, one hand up or in the air, raise one arm. Do it for at least a couple seconds. If you're a wing, you guys are mainly the ones giving that signal. That'll let the back judge or referee know for sure that you've called the play dead and that they should start the 40 second play clock. Only use that signal though when there's no other clock signal given. So incomplete pass, if you're killing the clock because it's a first down or if it's out of bounds, a touchdown signal for that matter, um, killing the clock after the play because there's a penalty, although that'll be a little different because we go to a 25 second play clock, but only use that arm in the air signal if you're not killing the clock using another signal. Otherwise, that incomplete or stop the clock signal tells the back judge or referee to again to start the play clock, or if we're lucky enough at some point a play clock operator. So back judge or referee, you should start the play clock a second or two after you see that the covering official has given that signal, whether it's the arm in the air, incomplete, kill the clock, whatever it is. And that should pretty much be the same for a play clock operator if we have one, if you're instructing them. We don't want to rush this, um, particularly if it's being kept by the back judge or referee. I want you to finish dead ball officiating. I don't want you to be so caught up in starting that play clock that you miss a late hit or just don't finish some other duties that you need to do. Uh, I think this will develop over time. You'll get a rhythm and, and you'll find it, it'll come pretty easy. 
it'll, it'll just be a, something to learn at first as we go. But uh, yeah, just again, don't start your play clock immediately. Just pause for a moment, make sure everything's actually dead, and then, uh, and then go for it. So here we have a series of clips. Uh, it's actually continuous from the Colorado Football Officials Association. I want to thank them a lot for providing this. They've actually been experimenting with the 40-second clock. So this is really helpful for us to see how it works, um, especially with a five-person crew. So uh, we'll run through it. Basically, they're just starting here with a kickoff. And at the end of this play, like every other kickoff, we kill the clock, like the official there at the bottom of the screen is doing. Now, we don't have a 40-second clock after a kickoff. It is 25. So this is, you've done this a million times before. We're going to, the referee will start that 25-second clock with a ready-for-play signal. Here, the umpire correctly standing over the ball until he gets the signal from the referee. Goes back, referee gives, punches it in, and there we go. Our clock has started. Now, this first play is going to be a, an incomplete pass. And one thing to remember is play clock and game clock are separate, right? So in this case, we have an incomplete pass. So right now, you can see the back judge there is signaling. Incomplete. The, the game clock will stop, but the play clock will start upon the back judge's signal. And there it goes. So again, the game clock stops and we don't do anything to it. The play clock will start after the incomplete signal. You can see here, ball is down right there and the play clock's at 27. Later we'll talk about what happens if the play clock gets under 25. But this is a good example of on some plays it's going to become close to 25 seconds before we get that ball down, especially on a long incomplete pass. Okay, and the ball is now ready for play. Once the umpire gets that ball down and backs off. Referee, you don't give any visible ready for play signal. Okay, this play is going to be a short run. Notice the wing at the bottom of the screen right there. Okay, he's giving that dead ball signal. That tells the back judge in a five-person crew or the referee in four to start that play clock. And referees, back judges, uh, don't be too quick to start it. We want to wait a second or two. One, I want you to make sure you, you finish dead ball officiating. But just be sure. You don't have to go too fast. Uh, you don't want to, we don't want to let several seconds go by. But just, you know, see the signal and then start your clock. Again, for referees, it's going to feel weird for a while, but you, didn't, you don't have to give a signal at all here. And you see the ball got down at 33 on the play clock. Guarantee a lot of you will blow ready for play a few times, but it'll, it'll, it'll change quick. You'll get used to it. Okay, on this play, we're going to have a first down in bounds. So on this one, we will temporarily stop the clock. Okay, there's our first down. There you go. Wing official kills the clock. That signal there is the dead ball signal in this case. So that tells the back judge here to start the play clock. And you see it already has started. Now on this one, we got to restart the game clock. So once the ball is set, umpire's about to put it down. Bam, referee right there. Good job. Starts the game clock. Isn't even looking at the chains at all. Chains don't even matter here. We're not waiting for them. This is going to go quicker. Um, if we have a chain crew that isn't hustling or isn't able to wing officials, you're going to have to work a little harder. Uh, you'll probably have to put a bean bag down just in case we need to know where the chains should have been. Referee also note that while you're winding the clock here, you don't need to blow your whistle. Uh, in fact, it's better not to. You can if you need to get the clock operator's attention if they're not starting it. Okay, here we're going to have another first down. Same routine. Can't see the wing, but they're killing the clock. Play clock starts. Umpire gets the ball. Referee's waiting. Ball's down. Bam. 32 seconds. Game clock has started. And on this one, we've got a touchdown. You'll see. There it is. Uh, 
we don't have a 40 second clock after a touchdown. And so this will be like business as usual for the try. The referee will chop it in at 25. And then uh, we'll go back to do another kickoff. So just a few closing thoughts here. There's a few things to keep in mind um, that we're going to have to work through as the season goes on as we um, really implement a pretty big change in how we administer a high school football game. Uh, one is if the play clock goes below 25 seconds before we st spot that ball. So um, first down but um, or even any long play and we're having a hard time getting a ball and play clock's down below 25 seconds and we still don't have a ball spotted. By rule, we're supposed to stop the game, get the ball set, and then the referee gives a ready for play to indicate at, that there's 25 seconds left. So if the referee's giving a ready for play, it's, it's going to be 25 seconds. So it's something we're going to feel out. I know they've been experimenting with it in states like Colorado. You know, if you're at 24 and it was an incomplete pass and everyone seems to be ready, I, I wouldn't make a big deal of stopping the game. I would just get a ball down and go. Um, but if if for whatever reason the clock's ticking down and uh, there's a there's a delay, you know, but we're gonna we're gonna have to kill it, put the ball down, and reset the play clock to 25, and the referee will start it. So that's one that. You know, that becomes game administration, and I believe crews will have to feel that out and know when the right time to do that is and when the right, right time not to do that is. One thing is, if you're using a mechanical device to time the play clock for you that doesn't have a display, you're not going to know how much time is left. So I would say that, depending on game situation, you should have a stopwatch as well. And if time is getting important, you know, typically at the end of a half or end of a game, and just going by feel isn't going to get it done, the referee or the back judge are going to have to have a second device that does show how much time's left, so you'll know if it goes under 25. So just something to keep in mind. And end of the quarter, same deal. Uh, you know, in the past, if we're doing a 25-second clock, as a referee, you can be staring at the clock, or maybe you're getting help from your back judge or umpire if it's behind you, and they might give you a little nod to say, yep, you're at 24 now, you can go, so that they don't have to snap the ball. Well, we don't have that anymore. And so if the clock's right around 40, uh, you're going to have to know. You know, Everyone's going to want to know, do I have to snap the ball or not? You're going to have to know. So again, it means awareness of where the game clock is, by the back judge or the referee, whoever's starting that play clock, so that they'll know. Uh, could also use a watch again as a backup there to help you out, but that's a question we're going to have to be able to answer rather than, I don't know. I don't know pretty much equi equates to, yeah, you're going to have to snap the ball because otherwise the offense can't take a chance. So a couple things to keep in mind there. And the, the last thing, just NC2AA has been using the 40-second uh, clock for a while now. It is a little bit different. They had a rule change last year where after a kickoff and after a score, so between the score and the try, it actually does use a 40, they do use a 40 second play clock. High school, we're not doing that. So after scores and after kickoffs, it will be a 25 second clock. And, you know, that question might come up by coaches, um, even fellow officials, if they watch a lot of Saturday ball. So it's just something to keep in mind. The rules are not exactly the same. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. If you're confused or you have any questions at all, there's my email address. Uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime. And I uh, hope you're having a good off season. And I hope you're uh, thinking about starting to get ready for the year. It's going to be here before you know it. Thanks.